Welcome everybody to a very special edition of Canadian Mortgage Hangout TV. My name is Gord McCallum. I'm joined as always by Scott Dawson in Vancouver, Rob Campbell in Guelph, Jackson Middleton also in Edmonton. And today we've got a very special guest. We've got uh, True, uh, President of True North Mortgage, Dan Eisner, uh, joining us. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today, Dan. How are you? Doing well. It's a beautiful day in Calgary. Great. So, Dan, I don't know why... Uh, there seems to be news follows you everywhere you go. You, they're, you're always in all the, at least the trade publications. Or t they're talking about you on Canadian Mortgage Trends. They're talking about you on Mortgage Broker News. They're talking about you on our show. Uh, tell us a little bit about why why uh, True North and, and you in particular are uh, such a hot topic right now. Well, I, uh, uh, you know, we, ever since we were on the Dragon's Den, uh, we've been a bit of a... Uh, a hot topic in the mortgage broker industry sure. um, and a lot of what we do follows us around uh, a lot of a lot of people call us you know uh, online brokers I actually don't see us as an online brokerage I mean we have uh, nine retail locations across Canada we have salary staff in those locations the, the vast majority of our business comes from those those uh, those locations um, however we do have an online presence um, and with and we we've, we're we've been a good client of Rate Hub over the years, and with Rate Hub's changes, uh, we have an opinion on it. Okay, well let's uh, let's talk a little bit about that. So for those who are watching the show for the first time, maybe. Uh, uh, you're here because of Dan's profile. We appreciate you joining us today. Uh, as always, uh, feel free, free to browse the back catalog of uh, archives. If you're a fan of what's going on in the mortgage industry, you can learn more about it. It's it's us talking about the mortgage industry, so we have a lot of fun with it. Um, rate Hub, Dan, is a, what would you call them, a rate comparison site, an online lead generator for mortgage brokers? Is there another descriptor you'd use? No, I think that nails it. Okay, and and there are several competitors in that space. Uh, are you also a customer of those other companies? Yeah, yeah, we are in various uh, sizes uh, with a lot of them. We've actually been fairly uh, uh, agnostic when it comes to this, where we, we will actually have advertise on a lot of different rate sites in different provinces, sometimes slightly different strategies, but yeah, we're on almost okay. all of them, I imagine. And uh, something that I'm curious about, tell, maybe tell tell our viewers, uh, if, if you can, what what the main strategy was with using uh, rate comparison sites like Rate Hub to generate referrals for your business? Um, uh, as, as you guys know, I, I operate using uh, salaried staff, um, and uh, the salaried staff aren't always busy. Um, and since I'm paying them to be there anyways, uh, when they're not busy, uh, getting them some online leads uh, it, to spend utilization of their time. So we use those leads when we're not busy um, to keep us keep the staff fully utilized. Great. Now, um, Scott, you were you were thinking about uh, you mentioned you wanted to ask about um, some of the controversy. So one of the reasons why we wanted to have Dan on the show was just uh, there's been a little controversy lately. Your your big customer rate hubs. Um, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I guess obviously the big that's what, that's what kind of brought the news and brought uh, brought this topic and having you come on here um, was with Rate Hub now. This basically early this week it was disclosed or announced that they're going to be opening their own brokerage. So I guess um, a bit of a controversy with some of the well, obviously looking at the comments on half you know on all, on all the, the blog posts, it, it pretty much exploded. So uh, your thoughts on that and, and basically you know because if you're advertising on there as a broker and all of a sudden they're opening a brokerage, you know, what's your thoughts? Well, we uh, we feel there's this there's a big temptation to have a conflict of interest. Um, uh, none, none of the other rate comparison sites have the same sort of conflict of interest, and except for um, uh, Rates Buy, uh, they acknowledge that Intel Mortgage and Rates Buy are sister companies, and and when they and they acknowledge that, and as a result, uh, the owners of those organizations decided that. That they're not going to charge uh, brokers for advertising and getting leads from their site because they knew that instinctively, intrinsically, there will be a conflict of interest if if one brokerage who advertises in telemortgage that advertises on rates by is it doesn't have to pay anything, whereas every other mortgage broker that advertises has to pay something. Clearly, that's a conflict 
uh, of interest and would dissuade from brokers from putting their rates on there. Uh, so I worry about a, a real conflict of interest. I, I don't see a model, uh, a successful model in the mortgage industry where that 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 is uh, that can work. So Dan, is this a case of RateHub being willing to really just looking to change gears completely, in spite of what they say? It sounds like they're saying publicly that no, we're gonna we're gonna maintain a bit of a separation. Of, of course, we're gonna be on there, but we're not going to limit our competition on the site. Um, is it a case of them um, saying that to, to hopefully not cut off all of their advertising revenue all at once? Uh, in your opinion, if you can speculate on that, or or is it? Um, or is it a matter of them really being willing to, at the end of the day, leverage what they've built as an online presence and just go hard into mortgage brokering uh, and and be willing to let the advertisers slide? Or do you see advertisers continuing on with them? Um, uh, you know, the uh, $64,000 question, Gord. Um, Will will it will will the rate hub in a year from now be just one mortgage broker with one website? Um, and and my in my mind, it, it, there's kind of there's just you know you have to choose. There's 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 a door either it's open or closed. You know either you your rate comparison site or your mortgage brokerage. You, you can't keep that 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 iron wall up. Um, uh, you know. Uh, it's one corporation. What are you going to do? And and they'll decide whichever pays them the best is what they're going to do. And in the end, only one is going to win. Uh, in the meantime, however, I'm I'm worried that uh, the amount of leads that come to True North Mortgage will fall, and or or, or and and I, I worry about the conflict of interest with yeah. the quality of leads. And yeah, so you know, I'm going to put a question to my colleagues, uh, Scott Jackson, Rob. Do you think um, if you were uh, uh, a client of rate hubs, do you think that this decision would uh, affect your uh, willingness to continue advertising on rate hub if you felt that conflict was it was there? Rob, go ahead with that. Well, I think you're going to have uh, I think you're going to have two sides of the spectrum, right? I think you're going to have people that would probably react like how uh, like I, how I would, um, and and I I kind of echo Dan's comment. It is a conflict of interest. I obviously if 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 uh, if leads are coming in off the interwebs as we like to call them on Canadian Mortgage Hangout TV, um, then you know are you are you resting easy at night? You know how how are those leads dispersed? How are they you know? Uh, who are, are they always going to the to the best rate at that given time? So who knows? Obviously, we're we're tre we're treachering into murky water with accusing rate hub, and that's not what I'm doing. But certainly, that's going to be a thought in some people's minds. And then I think you're going to have people on the other side go, "Oh, I mean, rest assured, there's people going, oh boy, True North is going to back out, and these other guys are going to back out. That's more opportunity for us, right?" So. I don't know. It depends on which side of the spectrum you want to stand. I th I think I suspect that most people will think eh, it's kind of murky. It's kind of murky now. Well, it certainly it, it seems to muddy the waters. Uh, wouldn't you? What would your thoughts be on that, Jackson? Yeah, I, I, obviously there's a conflict of interest there, and obviously it muddies the waters. Um, I don't. Here's the here's the thing that I struggle with. I don't think there's really that many players that have established businesses that can actually compete like Dan has online and actually have the salaried staff to support, you know, because there's a lot of leads that come through there. Um, maybe they're not the highest quality. Maybe you get some good ones. I kind of was hoping, Dan, you'd talk about, you know, it seems that, and, and this is just maybe from my perspective, but it seems the conversation from most mortgage brokers is all oh, this rate discounting, this online rate companies they're all terrible everything is terrible it's all bad and if you're you're a scourge of the industry and you kind of get that but they're not typically set up to handle these leads so can you tell us a bit about what it's like to source business from there how your business model is different and kind of what you see going forward before you, know, you do, uh, though, Dan, before you do though Dan because Dan I see I love it when Dan smiled he Dan, I think you like being the villain don't you Dan <laughs> You kind of, kind of like the WWE heel. Like you kind of, you like walking down and hearing the booze. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Go ahead, answer the question. I'm sorry. I, um, one, I don't see myself as the villain. By the way, I realize other people might, but in my own mind, I'm the hero. 
Um, right and you know, and 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 the reason why I, I always when I, I think that because when I make my decisions, I pretend there is the public, the customer is in the room. What would they think of this decision? Well, how would they feel about that? So, uh, and I, I feel like we're the hero for our customers, and that's that's really what pays the bills. So, um, as for uh, online uh, rate sites, are they good? Are they bad? You know, like everything else, uh, it's gray. You know, um, they they do have some good quality leads. Is the closing ratio strong? Not particularly. Do some rate comparison sites perform better than others? Yes. Do some better than others? Different months for sure. Um, so it's not, it's not, there's no black and white uh, simple answer to that. I do know that it is, it is uh, a tough hoe to create, to, to get value out of these leads. You really have to know, you have to have a system that's worked out and you have to be on top of it and you have to follow up and it's not just, it uh, doesn't rain money when you buy these leads, as, as most people know. Um, and, and this is what concerns us, you know, the closing ratio is not fantastic. Sometimes it's borderline. Do we do we really and 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 all of a sudden we have we have choices. We have other rate comparison sites we can do. We do pay per click. We can do SEO. We can invest our money in multiple ways. And now to say, do you want to invest it with a company that's you know and and has a murky murky motives? Uh, maybe we should just spend it somewhere else, and that's that's a better idea. And that's one of the things we're going to discuss with the board of directors tomorrow. Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna ask. Uh, is that uh, that decision hasn't been made? I guess it's something you're gonna talk about as a team. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow it just so happens that we happen to have our annual uh, board of directors meeting here in Calgary. Uh, so we have all the directors in town, and that's happening tomorrow. So clearly this is going to be on our agenda. Cool. Say hi to them for me. Um, yeah. Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob, you had a question for Dan. I do, and, and back to that Dan being the villain. Uh, I was so waiting for Ed McMahon to whip open his door there beside him and go, okay, Dan the man, you're next. Let's go. Um, Dan, and, 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 you know, touched on it. you touched on it before, and I think it's really important that maybe everybody watching uh, understands what you said because we've all been, and, and I'm just as guilty. I'll, I'll call bullshit on myself. We've all been guilty of saying, ah, Eisner and True North, uh, online leads, uh, discounting this and that. I think over time I've, I've grown to respect your model and we've had people on like Ron Butler. Um, it, it's a business model that works so why should we poo poo that, right? Um, my question to you is I've been in the path in Toronto sipping on a $28 latte as I walk by your, um, your store frontage, beautiful store frontage. My question to you is, and you touched on it a little bit before, what's the ratio, if you can disclose, what's the ratio of online versus walk-in traffic from your, just percentage, we're not looking for, I'm not looking for money or anything, just percentage yeah. of walk-in business versus online leads. Okay, so that question is not as simple as, as it, it sounds. We've, I've had someone come in to one of our stores with a rate supermarket printout with our name on it, but comes into the store. What is that? Is that a walk-in? Did they, were they, were they, did they go to their website as well? Was it, so it's not as simple as that. But what, what I've found is it's kind of uh, one-third, one-third, one-third. So one-third comes through our online presence, whether it be rate supermarket, Market Rate Hub or website, one, roughly one third comes through that way. One third is those walk-in clients, and of course, one third is our own old clients and referrals from old clients. Okay, yeah, that, and that that sounds about right. That sounds uh, consistent with what uh, I think we other people may see in their businesses as well. So, and I think it's I think it's wise. Um, to not have all your eggs in one basket, and I'm probably sure that you're glad right now that all of your eggs aren't in one basket, uh, because sometimes the basket can get uh, stepped on, run over, or withdrawn, uh, and yeah. uh, and then you're then you're hooped. So it's nice to know that uh, diversity is important, and uh, and that you follow that. Um, Scott, any thoughts, Scott, for you? On uh, on the future of of some of these rates. Now, one one thought that occurred to me, maybe strategically, that I can't speculate, but I'm going to anyway. Scott, do you think that um, Rate Hub may continue as a rate comparison site, but as a broker, only compare the rates of the lenders that it offers, or that are willing to maybe advertise on the site? Strategically, yeah. is that something they could do? I mean that's that's the thought. I mean I think I had the conversation with Rob earlier this week. I mean is it gonna and that's what you see on these on these sites already is you're seeing you know you're seeing brokers are are, are advertising but you know in between you go, you 
we'll pick on Rehub because it's that's what we're picking on today. But you see, you know, the banner ads for is for Scotia Bank or TD Canada Trust, and they're the big banks are advertising on there. So I think maybe I mean they've got deeper pockets than than probably all of the, of all the brokers combined. So why not go out after that? And so maybe it's a decision to sell, maybe not stop selling advertising, but sell advertising to the companies with the deepest pockets. Amy, or or broker the deals for those lenders. Dan, did you find yeah. did you find that over time, or have you found increased competition from um, from uh, direct lender uh, competition on those sites? Uh, no, I think for the most part, uh, it was really other brokers that were our direct competitors. By and large. They were like the the lenders are on there, they're participating, but from what I've seen, they don't typically compete rate wise. Is that fair to say? Yeah, you know, there's always those clients that want that brand, um, and I imagine they win those battles. Okay, uh, but that hasn't been a large part of it now. Hasn't been a big deal. Okay, well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, Jax, have you got any other questions for uh, for Mr. Eisner while we've got him? Because I know he's a busy guy. He's got to prepare for his board meeting tomorrow. We want to respect his time. I appreciate him coming on the show. Uh, have you got anything for Dan right now? Yeah, Dan, I really would like you to talk about your real estate division because that was, uh, I remember what I saw, I think it was Mortgage Broker News who broke it to me anyways and it's like yeah. real estate division and then like probably everybody comments, oh, this is terrible. But I went through your site, I looked at it and I'm like, I think this is a really smart idea. Why don't you, if you don't mind telling our viewers kind of what you're doing there and you know how it's been working, uh, I, I applaud you for your efforts in it. I think it's pretty cool. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm excited about it. So, you know, as business owners that we are, we have to look at ways to separate ourselves from our competitors. That is, you know, how do we prove that we're better? And there's a lot of talk in the industry about demonstrating our value. And, 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 and although we get criticized with low rates, but we do also always think about creating value for our clients. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. So uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, a lot of clients come into our stores, ask for pre-approvals, Great, we give them the pre-approvals, and, and then they go off and find themselves a realtor. Um, we tried to capitalize on that by, by having on staff, uh, let's call them BDMs, that worked with realtors. So we'd, we'd have clients come in, get a pre-approval. We'd say, okay, client, use our this, you know, come go to our BDM. BDM will give it to a realtor, and the realtor won't pay us for that lead, but what they, we expected was leads in return. It didn't work. Um, it just worked a little bit. Uh, we weren't getting enough leads in to kind of justify having BDMs and this whole model set up. So that kind of fell apart. Uh, but after it fell apart, uh, we, uh, I got calls from realtors saying, where are these leads? We love these leads. And, and eventually, uh, enough knocking on the head, uh, enough realtors calling me up saying, where are these leads? I realized there's actually value in these leads that we're giving away. But I wasn't going to do it the same way. Uh, so we decided to open up our own real estate brokerage, TN Realty, uh, have on-staff realtors working under a similar model that we do on the mortgage side. We're only doing buy side because all our clients buy houses, they don't necessarily sell houses. Uh, and the deal is you come in, you get a True North Mortgage, mortgage you use our TN Realty uh, real estate agent and they'll give you approximately half of their commission they get on the buy side back as a rebate. So uh, it's usually three, four, five thousand dollars. Just usually either one percent of the purchase price of the house. They get it back as as a rebate uh, after closing. Uh, the clients are really happy. Helps cover legal costs and whatever else they want to do with that money. Uh, the realtors are very busy here. Uh, our mortgage agents are happy because they have a very tight relationship with the realtors. And maybe other realtors don't like it, but they weren't sending us leads in the first place, anyways. <laughs> Love it. So and, and it's it's been working well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been very successful in Calgary. Um, uh, we're actually rolling it out in Toronto in August as well. Uh, plan on rolling this out to other markets. I think it's a way for us to add value to the client um, uh, more than another uh, than a bank can do. A bank can't do that. No. No. Yeah, that's actually uh, you know that's that's something that. Uh, Regardless of anybody's opinion about uh, about you or your their, your business, I think uh, it comes through loud and clear that you're putting the customer first, and that's a, a big part of your success. So, uh, and that's good for our industry. Um, yeah. 
people who aren't competing with that or well uh, may grumble about it. But the, the great thing about competition, and I'm a true free market guy, and, and uh, I, I think that when the competition is strong, it forces you to either um, put up or shut up and, uh, and get better to compete or go away. And that's uh, yeah. that's that's the the tough part, but the good part about competition. And unfortunately, I feel like our industry, through regulation and things like that, is going in a direction of of perhaps less competition. Um, and and that that always concerns me. So it's nice to see somebody uh, raising the game for everyone. So good job, Dan. Uh, thanks very much for being on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, let our viewers know about uh, going forward? Uh no, I, I uh, thank you, Gord. Thank you for that little compliment, compliment at the end. Sometimes I get uh, uh, poo-pooed by, by other people, but I, I am trying to do what's best for for my clients. That's who I'm most loyal to. Uh, so I appreciate your uh, your kudos for that, no and thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, great to have you. And uh, and uh, you can follow True North Mortgage at at True North MTG on Twitter. Uh, thanks for watching the show. You can uh, visit CanadianMortgageHangout.tv for all the back issues. Uh, get in touch with us on Twitter. Um, use the hashtag CMHTV. We'll be sure to get it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you. Well, that was interesting. Um, great, great conversation with Dan. What were your thoughts, guys? Any surprises for you? No, I don't think so. I think. Um you know, a lot of a lot of the people that are probably still watching us, and hopefully you are, you better tune in next week as well. Yeah. Um, same bat time. Well, actually, not same bat time. Same channel. I think I think Dan's a smart man. I think you, it, it, whether or not you agree with his model, whether or not you agree with his style of business, he's a business man, and his he's just rolling with what he knows, and what he knows is providing, in his sense, providing the best best value for his clients and True North Mortgage's clients. So it'll be very interesting to uh, see how he he uh, he moves forward in, in our space, but also the real estate side, and uh, maybe a sign of things to come. I don't know. We never really got into it, but I guess, you know, one of the most controversial parts about this wasn't just that rate hub who is a client of True North Mortgage's, um, or is it the other way around? No, yeah. No. Uh, True North is a client of Rate Hubs, but it's not just that Rate Hub who sells advertising at True North is now going to be competing with True North and other brokers and lenders who advertise on that site, but it's who went with them or who started the brokerage over at Rate Hub. We didn't really get a chance to ask Dan that question, but James Laird or Jim Laird, uh, depending on how well you know him, uh, was former VP. I don't believe he was a co-founder with Dan. I could be wrong on that. I could be corrected. But he's he was a, an executive with True North Mortgage. He left. Um, he, my understanding and what's been out in in the public um, is that he had a non-compete uh, agreement with True North, uh, so that if he exited True North, he wouldn't go to a competitor or maybe for a certain amount of time or whatever. But my understanding is that Rate Hub was excluded from that non-compete and that. Uh, uh, he is now the driving force behind this new Rate Hub brokerage. Uh, would anybody care to comment on that? And that, that to me, is possibly the most controversial part. Rate Hub's free to make a business decision to change their business model at any time. It might not be appealing to its clients, but whatever. That's the business they can do. Talk about the controversy with Jim. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I mean that's I think what kind of brought this all, all a lot of this conversation up too, right? I mean, can you, I guess you can't really blame Dan for being uh, a little bit miffed by that. That's probably maybe why he's a bit been vocal about, about possibly taking his advertising dollar away and, and investing it in another place. And I think, I guess it's not a bad thing to look at anyways. I mean, these these rate sites, like, put everything aside, these rate sites are expensive, right? It's expensive to buy a lead. So, you know, if that money can can be put somewhere else, uh, maybe he's going to start to focus more on his real estate side of it. Who knows? You know, who knows? Um, but it, it's kind of a sign that I guess this this industry is constantly constantly evolving, right? You have to be on your toes because it can switch. It is interesting. To, it is interesting, and I, I often wondered um, about Rate Hub in particular, but Rate Supermarket as well. One of the things that I noticed was it seemed like there was more competition amongst brokers early on in the days, and then True North was so effective uh, at at it and just dominated the site to the point where it, it was almost like everybody else kind of conceded. 
like you know what we're just it's the true north site now it was now we have to we have to go back we have to kind of go back in time as well because I, if I do remember I mean I think true north was true north mortgage was a brokerage long before Ray was even on the radar were they not like, oh yeah true north, true, true north I think has been around since about 98 or even before yeah that. so I mean, a few so years they, old. You know, so Dan was ahead of the curve of this a little bit by advertising. He was one of the, I, I would say, probably one of the first ones to really hit online at the time, and and offer offer rates that were at the time bought down, which have kind of become normal rates for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. And and then and then going online, other just other avenues, right, along along the way, everybody really kind of follows follows the leader, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's uh, it would be. Difficult, I'm sure, from uh, both a legal perspective, both from and and from a from a personal perspective. If you had a, a colleague leave uh, to go set up a competitor, I mean, I, who knows what the relationship was like before that happened? But uh, that's that. I know that I would take that personally. That would bother me if that happened. Um, so uh, let that be a lesson to you, Mr. Middleton. <laughs> if I get, I get a, where's my lawyer? Get my lawyer on the phone. I need, yeah, right, right. I need a non-compete stat and keep rate supermarket off of there, or yeah. on there. I mean, um, no, I, I think it's interesting the, uh, uh, the kind of the news that's been going out. I don't know if you guys read it today or maybe I just missed it, but it sounded like rate supermarket or uh, rate hub, sorry, was uh, actually looking to set up a B brokerage and do some B business as well, and. Uh, kind of move into the, that. So I think there may be a little bit more to this non-compete. Uh, you know, of course, we couldn't ask Dan about it because, you know, it's it's going to get, you know, he, he's not going to say anything on here that's going to put it out there. I mean, his lawyers have told him not to, and we have to respect that. But if I'm just speculating, you know, maybe the rate hub is going to be setting up more of a B brokerage. And I don't know, like... We don't know what that looks like. Maybe it'd be good to have it's Alyssa, right? Alyssa Richard. That's right. Yeah. We should yeah, have from right up. Maybe we should ask her because uh, and and there might be things that she's not able to say for legal reasons. But still, I wonder if there's more to it than that. Because yeah, the C uh, the CFO leaves True North, goes over now, starting this brokerage. You hear rumors that it's B. There's probably a lot more there than what's being reported on Mortgage Broker News, although they're probably doing their best to report what they can. There's more, there's always more to a story, and it would be nice to get to the bottom of it because I think, I don't know who gets painted worse, Dan or Rate Hub. I mean, just from the typical broker, uh, we don't like this kind of rate competition, but the truth is, is the average Canadian broker isn't really competing on Rate Hub anyways. So to... But everyone seems to invest their emotions in it, and the dialogue and the comments on the threads on Mortgage Broker News, it's its like you killed a family member. And its people just take this so personally. And they, it's interesting. I do. I, I get a kick out of it. I get heated. And, you know, uh, because I think it's good because I believe that we have passionate people about our industry, and we want to see the betterment of our industry. But I don't want to see that betterment of the industry at the sacrifice of choice. And I like the model. Is it for me? Not necessarily. But I'd like to know more of the backstory. I'd like to. I'd like to ha talk with Alyssa and say, why? Why rate choice? Why? What is the future of rate sites? That would be a really interesting show. I, um, I did. Well, I do have to say, I made a, a small mistake. I, I used the uh, Twitter handle at ratehub underscore Canada, which is now actually has been changed to just straight at rate hub. So uh, forgive me for that mistake. I'm correcting it right now. Well, hopefully, I mean, I'm guessing that rate hub is probably watching. Uh, let's have, let's put it out there to uh, Alyssa uh, to come on uh, maybe next week, next Thursday, or, or if she's got some time. We might we even do it WWE style. Like we could just channel Dan Eisner. We could do it like kind of the heel, like Alyssa Richard. If you're watching, and I know you're watching, we want you on the show next week for all the people to see. Take your vitamins. A hey, um, yeah. You know, uh, you know what? Uh, just to add what Jackson was saying, everybody gets heated because everybody is uh, is just you know so passionate about their uh, the industry. However, I think a lot of that heatedness comes from taking your eyes off what you're doing. You know, you've got Gordon Jackson, you've got your model, you've got, you know, as we all should, we all should have our business plan written down and our model and what we do and stay focused on that. And, 
you know what? Every time, every time we take our eyes off the off of the radar and start focusing on, oh, geez, Dan Iser, good for him. He's getting screwed because this has happened. Who cares, man? Wish the guy, wish the guy the best. Like Jack said, he's doing what's best for his clients, and it, it, uh, it, it makes our industry that much more in, in, uh, interesting. But it is funny to read the comments. Like, sure. who spends who spends a half an hour writing out a comment about? The key you know. difference is focus, right? I asked Dan, I said, hey, Dan, what, what's your Twitter handle so we can let people know you're going to be on the show? And he was like, uh, we have one. But I'm like, Dan, I'm going to guess you're not spending a whole lot of time on Twitter. And he said, frankly, you know, we, we, we want to be the best or the second best at whatever it is we do, and we're not... A gr you know, he, he said social media is important, but we're not doing it a ton of it because it's not what we're best at. So you got to admire the guy's focus. He's laser focused. He knows what he wants to do. Does it always work? No. His real estate thing was a good example. He tried something. It didn't work. He shot it down and tried something else. So good for him. And uh, maybe maybe that's something that all brokers could take a lesson from, which is stop worrying about what somebody else is doing. Stop spending all your time watching Canadian Mortgage Hangout TV. Get back to work. Oh, wait. <laughs> Never mind. You know, if this actually paid us something, I would never say that. But since it doesn't, you know, you could come, you could go. I still have fun talking with these guys. Uh, we'll, start, we, we'll, start, we'll start advertising rates on our site. Right. Yeah, starting officially. Actually, um, Canadian Mortgage Hangout TV is announcing that uh, it is also a rate site. <laughs> yeah, we're opening up our own brokerage, and it's called Rate Hubs with a Z on the end. <laughs> <laughs> and we push hot interweb leads. That's with right. A Z. Also with, with a Z. Z. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, uh, I think you know, realistically, it is time to get back to work. I've enjoyed the visit. It was great yeah. having you on the show. But we forgot to speed round them. I know. I even had a good speed round question, but what was your what was your speed round question? I forgot it. What was my speed round question, Jax? Who has better rates? You or Ron Butler? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to ask who, who's just like more in the industry, you or Ron Butler? And I was hoping you guys would both ask something between him and Ron Butler. We, you know, we could have a true like WWE style showdown between him and Ron, I bet. I don't know. I'm th I think they probably get along, but uh, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Ron's got gnarly old man strength. Oh. I take Ron. He's just, he's just, I love that guy. So do I. So I'd do vote, I. I'd vote for yeah. I'd, although Dan's a cool guy too, but yeah. Dan might you know, outsmart him. I wonder if Dan. I wonder if Dan fights like with that like monkey jujitsu style. What is that? Yeah. Kind of the hopping around. I was I was gonna ask Dan if if he was faced at the grocery store with uh, buying Hagen Dawes at full price or the no name brand at seventy five percent off. Which one would he choose? And he'd probably say. It's good that there's choice. He probably said he was a vegan or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jax, have you still got beef jerky? Maybe we can send some to Dan. Yeah, I've got lucky. <laughs> this beef jerky is good stuff. I keep eating it. All right. Well, Dan, if you finished watching this, which you probably didn't, uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, hey, hey. Raid Hubs just said they're looking forward to the launch of Raid Hubs with a Z. So good. Sweet. Have I a like great... it. Thanks for watching, Raid Hubs. So you guys good. are awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, thanks for doing Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.